right, welcome to Shop Talks. Shop Talks is a presentation of uh, the Ink Kitchen. Check out inkkitchen.com. Check out our YouTube channel. It's a function of the show impressions. We got sponsors. That's what makes it free. So all about them, Los Angeles Apparel, Alpha Broder, Stalls, Transfer Express, LAT Apparel, Hirsch, Powered, and Lane 7 make this possible. I also want to mention that behind you there in the, at the end of the row, at the end there, we're printing these posters by hand, and the money's going to Adelaide's Place, which is a great woman's shelter here in Atlantic City, so you can get a great poster and make a difference. We have sponsors for this, so all the money from the posters goes to Adelaide's Place. I'm here with my buddy Stan Banks from T-Shirt Side Hustle, and with Gavin St. George, who's uh, from seps.io, and we're going to talk about some things that might help your business, yes? Yes, we will. All right. Take it away, Stan. All right. So before uh, we start, just let people know about, before seps.io, what makes this talk relevant, uh, tell us about your business and how you got into the industry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. So um, what we're going to be talking about is simple systems and tech tools to modernize your decoration business, right? So why should you guys even listen to this or even listen to me? So I ran a screen printing business for seven years. Uh, something that we started at home with a heat press, grew it quickly to just started with a manual, then got an auto, then got a, uh, another auto. We had other different uh, printing method, embroidery, heat press, and all that. But even before that, you know, ran businesses for lots of big businesses, general manager for about a decade for this really big corporation managing over 100 people, and picked up a lot of things just through that whole journey, and also did some uh, schooling on just business management and also man uh, MIS. So what I'll be sharing with you is some of the things I learned along the way to help me build my business like really fast, and also just like systematize it, make it where it's not uh, a big burden on me to run a business. Systematize, yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear about that, but everybody needs it, right? So a lot, a lot of small shops are running around crazy, right? So kind of at what point, before we get into like what things would actually help them, at what point should someone start to consider systematizing <laughs> what they have going on? Yeah. So I think uh, systematizing your business is really a mindset. Like if you start with that, as early you could start with that, the better it is, right? I don't know if there's like a perfect timing because wherever you are in your journey, you're gonna need it. If you start early, then you lay the foundation where later on you don't have to do a lot of reverse things, right? So let's say you're hearing this right now and you're going down the system journey this is your perfect time, right? I don't think it's a, a ideal time. Well, the ideal time would be when you first starting your business. Like for example, we, I started a new startup. I started that with the mindset of have, have everything systematized in the beginning. Because I knew that would uh, make my life a little bit easier, right? But my screen printing shop, it was probably like a year or two into it when I really started taking it serious where I wanted to put everything into process, put things into docs, being able to like transfer my knowledge to other people. Uh, so everybody's going to be a little bit different. All right. So what do you got for us first? I know you had some slides, but we don't have them visibly right now. But where are we starting from? Yeah. So there were some slides that was going to back it back this up, but we could we could do it without the slides. So for me, I think like, so we all start, a lot of entrepreneurs start businesses, what I call the three F's, right? The three F's are mainly, you want finance, flexibility, and freedom. That's why I start business, because I want the flexibility of being able to travel, to do my things, hang out with my kids. That's what's in it for me. At the same time, of course, I want the money, right? Um, so with that in mind, knowing that if I don't build my business a certain way, I won't be able to get that. And the way to build your business to get those things is through systems and processes and to simplifying what you have. So it's really started with that mindset. 
like it also is like when a lot of people hear systems and process, it feels heavy. I know it felt it felt heavy to me. It felt like it's a lot of work to do. So there's not like a clear path to start. So hopefully what I'll be able to do is show you a path that you could take that maybe could help you out. The slide was gonna, uh, anybody that needs the slide, I could share it with you guys. I got the slide on my phone, but technical difficulty, we could get it up in the yeah, screen. And we'll put it on the video later. We'll, awesome. we'll add it. Yeah, so let's talk about what that journey could look like if you are thinking about systematizing your business and really make like your business super easy to run. So it's first, like I said, to start with thinking about it. Like it's something that I, a lot of experts call system stinking, right? Because if you're, everybody's personality is a little bit different. Uh, some people they go through life, they feel life, right? And some people they more analytical. If you're more analytical, systems and process is gonna be super easy for you because it's really about just boxing everything and organizing it, right? But if you are more, uh, you feel things through life, it's a little bit easier because everything in life is a little, is kind of blur, right? So it's about like training your mind to know where the lines start and when it ends. So systems thinking starts to help you uh, do that, right? So let me pull up this thing here so I can back this up. If you have another question, you could go ahead. When you say systems-based as opposed to what, maybe like personality-based or something, so that you can be free of your business, it's not all about you? Is that what you mean by that? Yeah. Um, so when we start business, especially entrepreneurial business, like t-shirt printing, it's all hustle. It's all um, drive, go get it, go get the sale. Right, but there's, we're not really like thinking like compartmentalizing the whole business, right? It's, everything's moving all in one line. So systems thinking is putting those boundaries, at least those mental boundaries where things start and where it ends. So for a small screen print shop or small decoration shop, owner operator, maybe, you know, a person and their wife or maybe, you know, a friend or maybe just a single owner operator, where do I start? What things should I look to to actually systematize my business to make me run it more efficient? Yeah. So I think there's four things you should start. So like to like go down this journey, right? It's really I the first system that you should try to go build. I call it the accountability system, which is really your businesses already have people in it. They're already doing the job. You just need to kind of classify what each person is going to be doing. A lot of times you'll see this comes up as an organizational chart, right? Uh, just flip it around, call it a accountability chart. Like So in your business, you're the CEO. As the CEO, your job is to do these things. And you literally write what these things are, which is going out to get the big customer, uh, the visions of the company, um, if it's like the legal aspect. So that's your bucket. And then you create the lanes that's in your business. Most small businesses fall into th like three natural department, which is sales and marketing. So that could be one uh, area of your business. And you list what those are. So that's like whoever is in charge of sales and marketing, they're in charge of ensuring that they driving that whole thing and the driving is really about managing the the systems maybe hiring maybe all the different playbooks and all the different tactics that goes along with that right so that's one the next natural uh department is production so a lot of us are in production business right so we're doing screen printing embroidery so uh box that into one area where you have a leader that's on top of that and then that lead you could break that down into your all you could have production, have every piece of production could have its own lane. Like screen printing could have its own lane, embroidery could have its own lane, heat press could have its own lane. And then the other department, natural department, is really about controlling what you, once you make the money, you have to be able to control it, which is finance and you could group it together with admin, right? Your finance and your admin. So that way, whatever money sales give you, it goes to, your production, your production could fulfill the promise that you made to your customer, but in the back end, you don't have a, a leaky, leaky bucket where all your monies are being wasted. 
So having those done in a semi-okay way, you already have a decent business. So what's the point of putting together this accountability or org chart if it's just me, right? It's just me, you know, I'm the CEO. I, I created these departments, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's still just me. Yeah, I think that's a really great question. So I think a lot of us aspire to have a big business or aspire to have a business that could truly give us freedom. And that comes a lot of time through scale and through like making that business bigger so it could give you more. So you're gonna be your own cap if it's just you and a lot of time, unless it's like a purely AI business or internet business where you're just behind a computer and you don't need anybody else. But I think for our business, we need people, right? So if it's just you right now, imagine you are all of those people. So build your chart with just your name on it. So you're the CEO, you're the production manager, uh, you're the sales and marketing person, you're also the finance. But what you wanna do is phase it out over time where you could X your name out of all those boxes, right? So that's how you could then hiring become a lot easier because like sometimes you don't even know where to start with to hire. But if you know you got this box to fill, you fill that box, Three months later, as you groom in that box, you go on to the next one. As you fill that one, you go on to the next one. So it's a way for you to see into the future. Usually, there is a point where you have to decide if you're going to go more for the sales or more for production, right? If you're the only person. Usually, yeah. one that's where the break happens, right? Yeah. Like, as a found, most founders and most owners should be focusing mainly on sales and well if that's well that because that's what that's the lifeblood of your business right uh i think if i was starting i would probably would go find somebody that could help me out with production and because i could tell my story better than anybody else could tell my story right so i'd do the sales get on the phone uh get in front of people uh, and then bring the business in and let somebody else do the production aspect. I think a lot of us uh, overall in the industry, we, we find that we fall in love with one part. Some of us fall in love with making, some of us go out and sell, and then we got to figure out how to make. But I think overall, especially being you know that the crowd is probably very diverse, by setting that vision of what you want your company to look like five years, ten years down the road, a lot of us don't do it. A lot of us just started today and we just started printing from something else, right? Some of us had clothing brands or printed for a rock band or whatever it is. And then we started selling just off of the nature of, you know, like somebody asked us. So now we figure out how to go do it and somebody asked for something else. But setting that vision of what you want the company to look like, now for me, I know I want to have five people max, right? But that org chart where my name is everywhere allows me to figure out, okay, I really don't like selling or I really don't like production. It'll allow you to identify what your needs are based on what you want your company to look like. It's easier for us to see. We all know we need help. I wish I had help. How can I get help? What, what, what do I tell this person to do? And I think that's more so what you're talking about is put it out. Like a lot of us don't plan this thing out. Take some time, understand what roles are in your business that you're doing, and then try to figure out where and when you know where, because you got these things identified. Now it's about the time in which the sales and the you know things that pick up can allow you to remove yourself from doing these parts. So, is there any tools for you know helping you organize your thinking in this systematic way? Like, what kind of tools can help you do these uh, divisions of the tasks and so forth? Yeah, there's a as a bunch of tools. Uh, I'm very cautious about tools because sometimes they could just overwhelm you, right? Uh, so, yeah, well, it's interesting you started with it's the mindset, not yeah, a tool, right? Yeah, because like, and I'll be sharing some tools that you could use, but I would say in the beginning, a, pen, uh, uh, a pencil and a piece of paper will do it, right? And I'm a, I have a MIS degree. I'm fairly okay with computer tools, right? But my advice to you is like, it's not about the tools because it's the tools just help you speed it up. It helps you store that information where you can't remember all that stuff, right? So the tool is not uh, the tool. Sometimes add complexity most of the time because you don't know what you're getting yourself into. So I talked about 
accountability system. That's one system, which is prop the place where you should start. And when you, one thing, let me add one more thing about the accountability system that's kind of powerful. So as you bring in people into your business, make that as part of your onboarding to show them where they are. Like if you show them where they are, they know where they fit into your business. And they also know where opportunities are. Sometimes not having that clarity as a new person, like you feel like you don't know where you, where you are. So that's a big, like just that simple little drawing, show like in the beginning, like really like set their path for their whole career with you. And, uh, and it also makes, um, it gives people lots of clarity, lots of clarity. So you mean like organizational chart and like a job description, like that kind of thing? That's yeah, what you're giving? I mean, yeah, I'll just, so when I do my onboarding, like just that chart, which, um, which I call, uh, this is not originally to me, but it's like, don't call it an organizational chart, call it an accountability chart, because we all are accountable for this thing. Your contribution to my company is this, and this is what I'm gonna be grading you on, this is what I want. And a lot of time it's our fault as founders or as owners because we not clear on what we want from that person. So if you are yourself clear and then you make that clear to them by just using that chart, doing your uh, onboarding, you just set that person up for success, right? Instead of like, you kind of doing this and you help out over here if we need you here, which you can, but make sure those are clear and then there's like a direct line for that person to see. Uh, it's all about just managing that expectation in the, in the front end. And the people that's coming to your business, they're gonna feel that professionalism. And they're gonna feel like, okay, I'm working for a company that I know is, is on solid ground, just that little sheet of paper. It just, it makes it feel real. I think what you're talking about goes into the culture. Uh, I think a lot of businesses today rely on the culture of people understanding where they fit and how they need to work together. And I feel like that's what you're leaning more towards there. Yeah, it sets the right culture. So the second system I would tackle after I get this down pack, which is the counter, the second one, I call it the essential systems. Essential systems are really the core systems in your business that you want to have documented, right? And we'll talk about documenting the system. It's not as hard as most people think about it, but you need to know what you're gonna document first before you go to document it. And you need to have a systematic way to like work through it, right? So it's really looking at your business, starting with that organizational chart. You have your different department, right? Sales and marketing, you have your production, you have your finance and admin, and you could even add another one that says maybe management or just like hiring or whatever, right? So you would say, hey, for sales and for me to get a sales, I probably need three things. I, I need to do three things, right? I need to be able to have like, how do I find people that's gonna want my service? So just document that. Like it may be, hey, I just do videos and I put it on, that's my way of getting people. So just have a clear way of just, doing that or sales like if you're doing presentation how do I do a sales presentation when somebody walk into my shop or when somebody uh, is interested in what I'm doing so let's say it's those two, two things that you want to systematize because you don't want to systematize everything right up front because it's gonna feel too heavy just systematize, systematize like the key things that could get me sales right or the key things that's gonna make my customer aware of what I'm doing. And then you move on to the next department, which is uh, your production, let's say screen printing. Like how, what's the couple of things I need to do here in order to fulfill my promise to the customer? How do I print, how do I print shirts, right? Maybe it's like two or three videos, or you could find videos that's already out there, make that your own systems, right? How do I or receive the shirt? Like, how do I make this whole thing move like a machine, but uh, in a way that's super simple? How do I then move to the next one? How do I do my payroll? How do I make sure, maybe it's outsourcing your books, 
So having those, those are your core systems. Like you could literally have like 12 systems and you running a really good business because like everybody's super clear now on what to do. So I got all of that stuff in my head. Like what is the benefit to taking the time out to put it on paper or to kind of have it documented? What is the benefit? Why should I quote unquote waste my time? Yeah. You know, when I know how the business is operating because I'm doing everything. Yeah. So um, let me see which way. Because there's a million answers to this one. Because, like, we could be uh, it's coming from... It's only in your head. Yeah. It, so, ain't, it ain't going very far after that. We could be your head will always be involved. Yeah. We could be coming off the stage right here, and you take a, you take a, a spill. <laughs> and half the information in your brain is gone. <laughs> right? So, like, what, what, what good is that? And a lot of time, it's like, you need to be able to transfer information. Like... I can't read your brain. And that's a good thing because, like, I don't want everybody to know what's in my brain. I want them to know the things that I want them to know. Uh, and the things that I want them to know in this case, in this business scenario, is, like, how to help me do this job. Like, how to help me. For me, it's all about freedom uh, and flexibility. That's my uh, dr drive uh, to ha have this happen. Uh, but at the same time, I can't build a business with it just in my mind or just me giving verbal orders all the time. Um, that should be like a point of reference. So what's next? Yeah. Good. So that was system. That was second way to attack the system. First way is accountability systems. Ne next way is essential systems. Just figuring out what those are. Just say it. You don't even have to doc you don't even have to systematize them yet. Just say what they are. Which is literally how do I get sales? How do I how do people become aware of me? How do I convert them to a sale? How do I um do what I promise? Right? And how do I make sure I secure my money? Uh that's right. Then the other one is create a system for your system. Right? Which is literally like all right, so now I want to do these things. I want to create a template of how I want to document things, right? Or I want to also create a place where I want to put this thing, right? Usually, that's when you would start applying technology, right? That's, when, that's why I say don't start with technology. Apply it at the right time. That's when you're starting to like, okay, I need to be able to document this, store this, then sh be able to share it and also be able to secure it because this is your interne intellectual knowledge. That's what runs your business. Really, that is your business. Like the t-shirt printing is not your business. Your business is the process of doing that because then you could take that process and go to another city, go somewhere else, and you even if that business fails, you got the process of doing it. And it's documented. Uh, so um, it's really about having a system for your system. And that, and that starts with like a place to store it. So you could start as basic as just using Google Docs, right? So Google Drive will allow you to store. You could use a sheet to like create a table. These are my systems for marketing. These are my system for sales, right? Uh, these are my system, and you could link that up. There are tools that are already built for this thing where you don't have to do this your, yourself. Uh, example of some tools that are available where you could just use them right out of the, sh uh, just, just go subscribe for it or buy it. One tool is called Trainual, like training, but Trainual. Another t a tool is called Process Street. Uh, there's another one that's called Systems Hub, right? So all of these, they house the system. They also give you template on how to like pull the systems out of your head. So that way you're not starting from scratch. Uh, you have something, hey, to follow, right? So that way it makes it easy for you to like document. It's like you asking me a question right now, I just answer it. So that template just does that for you. So having a system for your system, and then you could then, once you have those 
then that's when you could start sharing it to people. A lot of times just using a link. You could then include it onto your onboarding process. You could then take that link, make a QR code, put it next to your press. You could take that link, put it next to your table uh, while you have sales just as a quick reference. So it become a powerful tool that you could just deploy in your whole business and share it. So you, it sounds like you just took, like we all, we, we have screen print shop, let's say, or an embroidery shop or both, right? It sounds like you just took your system and put it into a computer, but as an employee going in to be a press operator with the QR code, they can kind of refresh their memory on the spot. So you, now you took it from out of my mind, right? And I didn't really understand why, but now no matter where somebody is in the office, or whatever the role is, if they don't know, they have a place that they can go and train, hey, here's how you pack an order, and they can learn kind of a sense without you being there. So, hey, Gavin, I need you to fill in that pack in the day, take the first 15 minutes and go through that process, come back with any questions before you even get them there. So is that, uh, is that accurate now, where you're, where you're headed? Yeah, absolutely. It's just about being able to pass that information in an easy way because your people are not going to have the same passion that you have for your business, right? So you have to kind of almost spoon-fed spoon them the information in the easiest way possible, right? They're not going to go and read your whole manual and manuscript and how you're going to have passion for that because you know the benefit. You know what you're trying to get out of it. Your people, they just need to be able to do that job so they could get paid. Of course, a lot of them, they love what they do, but a big part of the equation is them getting paid. Uh, and everything else that you're putting into in front of that is just more work. They want to get paid with the least amount of friction. Um, so the system and process just kind of like help them with that. So, so how much do you break it down? So you're talking about like you would say how to code a screen, how to shoot a screen, how to wash out a screen, like what, what how? How granular? Yeah. Yeah. It's really, on your, it's really on you how deep you want to go. Like, just think about what is, what is the quickest and least, fastest way I could get this done, like, without doing this whole educational exercise, right? Like, oh, I need to systematize my whole thing from steps to step to step. That you're probably going to start and get uh, so, uh, distracted, like, on the first page because it's just gonna feel so heavy, right? So make it as simple as possible. That's why you start with the essential system. Like the goal is to like, how do I get sale? Like what is the cleanest way I could do this? The first couple of steps. Of course it goes deep because you could have a bunch of different playbooks on the, that w and, uh, and same thing for production. You could have a bunch of different processes, right? But that decision is really on you, like how your business is set up. But it should, you should go into it with the mindset of like, if I had to teach this to somebody that's brand new, right, and I'm in a crunch, I just need somebody right now, hey, go watch this video real quick. Just go watch these couple of videos. I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. Can, would that be able to achieve that without you being standing there, right? Um, that, that would be my mindset. So as far as the number, you decide what that is. So what's the, you said it's four, right? So we just went through three. What's number four? Yeah. So number four is then applying the technology, deciding the tools that you're going to use to do this. So I shared a couple of tools with you. Like one tool that I really like to like, so uh, to just manage my whole business there's a bunch of tools and it's really your preference but you need to have like a knowledge base in your co company where you could store things i personally use this tool that's called notion right so notion allows me to just like organize things it has tables it has database it has docs it allows you to just customize what's in your mind so that's how I do it personally. I use, I use Notion as well. Yeah. And there's a bunch of alternative to Notion. So Notion is, not, that's just my preference, but there's like ClickUp, there's Monday. Mi Monday, yeah. Microsoft Teams, they all have these, um, what I would say, knowledge 
capture collaboration, it allow you to collaborate with, your, with other people, be able to share it, and just capture the information in one way. One thing about tools, pick one that you feel is good with you. For me, I, I look for the UI or the, like the aesthetic of the tool. Is that tool like super easy on the eye? Because a lot of time, if it's complex, the person that's gonna use it, that's already a friction. And they are not gonna like dive in because that, that the design of the software was not done, prop, uh, done in a world-class way. It's done in a clunky way. So what I look for is tools that are super simple that like my daughter could use or like somebody like out of high school could use. Even that probably is like a high bar. Like, so, and a lot of the modern tools are already built this way. Like, people that build like these world-class tools, they understand like human thinking, so they apply that to, but if you're, um, that's why I like Notion is like a super, like monochrome, mono, like yeah. one color. Uh, there's not a lot of distraction. It's, there's not a lot of pictures. So I just like that. ClickUp is more colorful. Um, if I had to start right now, it would be a fight between Notion and ClickUp as far as like my knowledge base. Um, I just like a lot of the work that ClickUp has been doing. I was gonna, go ahead. Wanna briefly just say advantages of each, like real brief? Yeah, I'm more heavy on Notion, so that's where I, ClickUp, I just went into their thing, just tried it out, I didn't use it like at work. So for Notion, for example, the advantage is just, um, it's extremely customizable, which a lot of time is, could be a problem, cause like you're, but they also have a bunch of templates, templates. that you could use right out of, cause there's a whole community be behind it that's just doing templates. And they, people just share. Like if I create something cool, like I could just put it out in the Notion community and the next person could just take it and grab it. So a lot of time when I'm starting something, hey, I need a table for, so I was just, the other day I was creating a table to um, track commissions, right? And I was like, ah, uh, I could crack my brain to try to like build everything, but let me go see if somebody else has already done it, even if it's not the way that I want it, but at least it gives me a starting point. I think uh, I think yeah. today the the application market is so oversaturated. You got so many options. So what you said is right. Like you know when you figure out what type of software you need, uh, or whether it's forms or whether it's productivity management, all of that stuff. As you do a quick Google search, you sign up for the first three trial versions, and you you just see which one you gravitate towards the most because we're all gonna need something different. And you definitely want something, in my opinion, like he said, the UI is really, really simple and clean because you wanna think about the people that you're gonna implement in it, right? And if it's too complex, I think Monday is very, very complex in comparison to Notion. Uh, so just consider how, how you would like to see things. And then also, whoever else is on your team, give them a task to do and say, hey, look at this board, right? For me, uh, from a content standpoint, I like it because I can set five, I set five little columns together. This was ready to be shot. This one's the files done. So simply dragging one from the next and just telling the next person to go and do things. Automation can be included. Yeah. Uh, so that is something that is getting tougher and tougher by the day. And uh, we all want an all-in-one system, but sometimes that all-in-one system is the exact thing you don't need because it's, it's too overcomplicated. And the UI experience is why people get paid a lot of money nowadays because that experience of how we see things based on what they want us to be able to do, it, it changes uh, with, with every developer and every software. Yeah. Uh, I think now we should open up any questions. Uh, let in, let, in me, let me just share this one thing because I think this could be helpful for them. So when you start to think about um, technology and like how to apply it to your business, um, here's kind of how you should, um, how I think you should do it. There's really four, for us small business and for garment decorators, there's really four categories of tools that we need, like technology tools, right? So if you use those categories, it'll kind of 
help you not get like subscribe to a bunch of tools that you don't even need or you like trying this out so it'll help you save time and like because a lot of us have a bunch of subscriptions just running in the background <laughs> i know that so I, uh the four categories are this um one you need a collaboration tool think of what that what that means collaborate how, how do i communicate with my team and stuff like that a internal commun communication tool it could be as simple as like a group text that's right but it also could be as world class as slack right so a lot of techno a lot of shops as you start to get people into your business you're going to need a way to make sure information move freely and smoothly right so the collaboration does that so my recommendation is slack slack just you put everybody there you could create channels you could get your emails to go on slack you could connect other apps so the best collaboration tool is slack uh microsoft team also have their version you could use it's just literally a group chat that's what that is right so that's that number two i would say you need a relationship management tool right because you're going to be dealing with outsiders in your business right so you got your internal collaboration tool you need a relationship management tool that's when a lot of businesses starts doing a crm customer relationship management tool right there's a bunch of different crms pick which one you like um i mean probably the most uh popular one that most people here is salesforce or hubspot I think those are overkill for our businesses. You just need something super, super simple. One that I really like was a tool I found. It's called Streak, Streak CRM. It lives right inside of Gmail. I love the fact that it lives right inside of Gmail that I could, because as you start to grow, email gets a little bit hard to manage all of your outgoing communication, right? So um, just having a tool where you could like, I got the sale, I want to move it. And a lot of time, a lot of the shop management tools right now, they're starting to have that built in. So you could kill one, or two birds with one stone, that's yep, what it's called, yep, yep. by doing that. So the other category is a operational tool, right? And that's when a shop management tool comes into play. You need one area where you could manage your product. It's really a project management tool. Uh, that's when you see a lot of people go into Printavo or Shopvox, YoPrint, T-Sum, or any of these tools that's out here. You just need a collaboration tool to keep everything together uh, so you can move things through your business. And, you just, and the next one is a marketing and content tool because you need to be able to tell your story. Uh, a lot of time, if, to simplify it, just get one tool that you could manage all of your content through. Something like a Hootsuite or one of these things where you don't have to log into a bunch of platform. Uh, you don't have to go to your Instagram, your YouTube. You could have it all in one place. One post, they'll put it on Facebook, Twitter. Exactly. Instagram. Yeah, so four category. Category one, collaboration tool. Example, Slack. Uh, relationship management tool. A CRM. Example, Streak CRM or HubSpot or Salesforce. Well, again, there's thousands of CRM tools, yeah. like it's on you. Uh, operational tool, get an industry specific operational tool. One of these that's built by one of these manufacturers, um, one of these software companies out here. And then content and marketing tool. Um, yeah. Dope. Any questions? We got time for maybe two. Yeah. Nope. Cool. Guess you filled everyone's brains. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot. Any questions? Don't be shy. All right, you gonna hang out for a few minutes? Yeah, definitely. So All right. if, if sorry about this. Oh, yeah. So if any of you guys just wanna reach out to me, uh, or just get the slide that I talked to you guys about, just see me afterward, or uh, just email me, Gavin, G A V I N, at seps.io s-e-p-s dot i-o gavin at seps .io. all right and you'll h hang around for a few minutes if people have questions as well all right i want to thank uh, oh how about a hand for uh, gavin st george
Um, I want to thank our sponsors again. Like I said, no sponsors, no free stuff. Los Angeles Apparel, Alpha Broder, Stalls, Transfer Express, LET Apparel, Hirsch, Howard, Lane 7. Thanks to Impressions. Check out inkitchen.com and our YouTube channel. Thank you for coming.